Within this area, normally the buffer pool is the largest memory area. A buffer pool is memory cache for your database. If you create more buffer pools or if the size of the buffer pool is large, then it will consume more memory in this area. The first time you connect to a database with a connect DB statement or activate to a database with the activate DB statement, the database global memory will be brought up. So if you have many connections to different databases, then more memory will be consumed at the same time. Let's quickly see using the Windows Task Manager how memory goes up and down when I connect to the sample database. So if I type db2 connect to sample, before I press enter, let's take a look how much memory we are consuming right now. It says 1.75 gig in my computer. Now if I press enter, we see memory goes up to one about 1.8 gig. If I disconnect by using the db2 terminate command, we see now we go down to 1.76 gig. So let's go back and connect again. And then let's take a look at the buffer pools in this database. So I can do db2 select star from syscat let me move the window here so you can see the full command dot buffer pool and press enter and this will show you all the buffer pools that you have and the size of the buffer pool in this case the IBM default BP is the only buffer pool I have and it has 250 pages where each page is of size 8K. Now let me alter the size of the pages, or sorry, let me alter the amount of pages by using the db2 alter buffer pool, the name of the buffer pool, and we change the size to 50,000 pages. And now before I press enter, we're gonna see that the size or the uh, amount of memory consumed is going to go from 1.81 gig to a larger amount. So let's see how much it will go up. And as you can see, it went up to about 2.19 gigs. Now, if I do an alter again and set it back to, to 50 pages and press enter, then it goes back to 1.86 gig of memory. So this just quickly show you how memory is being consumed, in this case, by the buffer pool. Next in the database global memory, you have the utility heap, which includes the backup buffer and the restore buffer that are used for backup and restore operations. Then you have the log list, which is used for logs. It stores all of, all of your logs, which is used for concurrency and integrity of your data. Then we have the package cache, which is used to cache the access plan for a given SQL statement. The access plan is a strategy that DB2 uses um, to access your data. So DB2 will calculate that information and then it will store or cache this information in this package cache. If the access plan is cached, then the next time the same SQL statement is executed, DB2 will not need to recompute these um, access plan because it's already in the cache. This will only apply to dynamic SQL. Then on the right side we have the database heap and within that heap we have the log buffer which is used for recovery logs and the catalog cache which is used to cache the catalog also known as the data dictionary. The catalog is often used so it's good to cache it. Now let's issue a db2 mtrk-d-b, which will show us all the database memory consumption and the dash b is for verbose. So we have here the backup and restore utility heaps, package cache, catalog cache, buffer pools, and so on. Now the application heap is actually not in the database global memory, but in the application shared memory area which we have not discussed yet 
but this command is showing you the consumption for the entire database and the database will consume will consume memory from different areas um, not only the database global memory area but also the application shared memory area